can the curious and faithful go to watch UFOs? This mailbox, ironically known as the Black Mailbox, is a legend to Area 51 lore. It just happens to be located where uh, the best vantage point for lining up uh, a low section in the hills with the airspace above Area 51, you know, is, is probably the most photographed mailbox in the world. Uh, I expect to come out one day and see people with prayer rugs worshiping the thing. It's like the monolith in 2001. It's located on Route 375, a 98-mile stretch of blacktop that skirts the entire northern boundary of the Nellis Air Force Base. In 1996, Nevada's Board of Tourism capitalized on Area 51's reputation for saucers and aliens and officially inaugurated Route 375 as the extraterrestrial highway. This is the E.T. Highway is nothing more than a name on a map. I don't think that you're more likely to see UFOs here than any place else on the planet. Yet hundreds of UFO enthusiasts continue to make the pilgrimage here every year. On most nights, revolving bands of UFO watchers gather around the mailbox in the hope of seeing experimental aircraft or alien spaceships. People have heard about this on the news. They, they've, they've read about it in articles. It's been building up for years. And when people want to take their vacations and they've been every place else, they say, hey, let's go to Area 51 and see the saucers. And anyone who does make the pilgrimage will inevitably come here. Purchased by Pat and Joe Travis in 1988 and renamed the Little Alien, this remote desert watering hole has become a cash cow for its owners and the center of the galaxy for UFO believers. There are a lot of people that come here to Rachel from all around the world to see if they can see a craft in the sky or maybe a being or feel the beings that are here. Area 51, I, I guess it's something that our country needs, that, that ufology needs. It's a place for people to displace their, their wishes. Uh, I think if Area 51 went away, if it became open overnight, we'd invent a new one someplace else. Nothing has fed and sustained the obsession with UFOs more powerfully than the dream machine called Hollywood. The UFO craze of the late 40s made the film industry realize the potential for making movies about the saucers. As these extraterrestrial extravaganzas increased in both number and popularity, they addressed all the questions raised by the UFO phenomenon that science and government couldn't or wouldn't explain. Governments and science have always dealt with this subject in a very cautious, step-by-step -step way, never making any leaps, limiting their assumptions, uh, and uh, certainly protecting the domestic tranquility by not uh, overwhelming us with information that might shock or transform uh, our civilization overnight. Hollywood has never shown such restraint. As long as there were mysteries and unanswered questions, fascination in the UFO phenomenon could be sustained. These films go right to the heart of something that's philosophical in all of us, in terms of giving us uh, answers to where we fit in the great scheme of things, to how vast life might be in this universe. And in that sense, they satisfy a yearning that is at one level almost a religious yearning, uh, filling a new myth for our times. But on the other hand, they may be giving us a glimpse of something that could very well be real. Mike Orlando, owner of a movie memorabilia shop in Toronto, understands why people like UFO in alien movies. Visually, they're spectacular, so they like that. There's a lot of action. They like that. But sometimes uh, they address certain problems that, or, that we're having in our own lives, in our own culture. All vehicles, close in. As the Cold War set in in the 50s, Americans were obsessed with the idea that the USSR would develop its own nuclear weapons, making an invasion possible. It was an obsession Hollywood was only too happy to exploit. So they invented UFOs and aliens as a way of portraying the communist invasion of the U.S. <laughs> three or four movies actually dealt with pure life forms on another planet. Most of them were trying to deal with the communist invasion. 
generally when you introduce the alien theme into a film, uh, you look at uh, the, uh, their purpose in coming. Is it to, to help us, to educate us, to elevate us? You found that in the film by Robert Wise, The Day the Earth Stood Still, where a stern warning was delivered. But the purpose was to get man to give up his warfaring ways. But if you threaten to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned out cinder. With the Cold War over, it wasn't long before the government became the new focus of public suspicion. Today, a strong belief that authorities are covering up UFOs has caused Hollywood to capitalize on this idea, triggering an avalanche of movies that use the conspiracy plot. The conspiracy theme keeps cropping up because it's been germane to the UFO issue from the beginning. People have reported sightings. Authorities have denied that they've really seen what their eyes tell them that they've seen. All right, Beatrice, there was no alien. Flash of light you saw in the sky was not a UFO. Swamp gas from a weather balloon was trapped in the thermal pocket and refracted the light from me. In the film Men in Black, you certainly see that message delivered. People can't know. They can't be told. Sorry. Perhaps to an even greater extent than the movies, the media has fueled our fascination with UFOs by exploiting our interest in them. The interest has always been there in what a scientist has to say about such a controversial topic. What's changed, and changed in spades, is the media perception of public interest. There's been a massive escalation of the number of films and videos that are dramatizing or bringing documentary information about UFOs to the public. You just see it everywhere. It's been a veritable explosion in the media. With the explosion of primetime dramas, which, which pander uh, to the paranormal and in particular UFOs and alien abductions, the people aren't able to, to really sort out fact from fantasy any longer. It's just so inundated in the popular culture. Uh, with visions or images of aliens and of alien craft and of alien abductions. So a script will be written about an abduction experience. The script is filmed and the show is broadcast. Then that show becomes part of the materials which are gathered up by the culture and fed back. So you go to gatherings of abductees and they're describing experiences which you have seen on television. Right? You saw that episode. Right? And they're just telling you that they lived it. Um, where are you? Way out there. Today, the popularity of the UFO phenomenon has grown into a cultural giant. Roswell, a town once held hostage by its own secret, played host to the biggest UFO-inspired gathering in history. Encounters 97, the 50th anniversary of the Roswell incident, was proof of the extent to which aliens have indeed successfully invaded our culture. In July 1997, thousands of enthusiasts, investigators, skeptics, experiencers, and spiritualists have made the pilgrimage to an event that would not have been possible ten years earlier. National UFO Museum and Research Center was founded in 1991. It's managed by Dion Crosby, who has closely witnessed the explosion in popularity of the phenomenon in recent years. Last year this time at the museum, there were 300 people, our first 300 person day. This year we are seeing 15, 18, 2200 people a day. By week's end, Encounters 97 grossed nearly 50,000 people, doubling the town's population. The subject has never enjoyed so much attention. It even earned a place on the cover of Time magazine. Dion's husband, Stan, chairman of Encounters 97, was amazed at the media coverage the event received. Besides getting the cover of Time magazine, we've had media from all over the world covering this. At last count, we had over 300 news organizations such places as uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, uh, Korea, Japan, South America, Mexico. Oh, we see all types when they come here. You know, we you can look around and see the, the strange and outlandish. Hi, folks. We is Zarvin and Zertle Bumpus. 
Wade's here from Aurora, Texas. He is New Mexico resident, so we only been here for 50, 50 years. 50 years. Yeah, about 50. And mostly you see families. Very normal, average, everyday Americans. And uh, a lot of people from all over the world. Here since 47? Oh, wow. How do you like it here in Roswell? How do you like it here in Roswell? <laughs> we've seen some pretty strange things since we've been here. So. We, we are believers now. <laughs> There are also those within the subculture that have made UFOs their business. Jumping from one UFO convention to the next, merchants will be found selling any and everything that can be spiced up with an alien theme. I designed a piece of fabric special for the 50th anniversary. Um, it has aliens and spaceships on it. These are called our alien pops and they're in eight out of the four flavors. I'm from El Paso, Texas, and we came up here to sell burritos, and our most popular burrito is our alien burrito. This is the world's first Visa card that can alienate anyone. I'm the president of the UFO Abduction Insurance Company, and we sell a $10 million UFO Abduction Insurance policy. Normally, to, uh, to uh, get the benefits of the claim, you have to get a a signature of an authorized onboard alien. It, it can't be someone making grilled cheese sandwiches in the galley. An unpleasant odor is present. Circumference of but attraction to UFOs stretches far beyond the conventions, live theater, and t-shirt vendors. For many people, it's serious business. I'm an alien believer. There's something up there. The government's hiding it, and I'm here to find answers. You have people who are the true believers who are going to be confirmed in their beliefs. There are, are people who are skeptical, but in a sense want to believe. So they're going to try and find evidence for something that they think might be the case. For many, the evidence is a ledge of rock on rancher Hub Corn's property, 30 miles outside of Roswell. At $15 a head, Hub runs busloads of tours to what some believe is a crash site of a crippled UFO. I believe that the Corn Ranch, nice place to make money, I guess, having people come visit the supposed crash site. I can't find anything to substantiate his story, and a lot of reasons for thinking it simply isn't true. But to the ardent believer, this ledge was the impact site of an extraterrestrial craft. For them, the site is a shrine to modern ufology. The people who are interested in the UFO phenomenon are people who are looking for something. They're looking for some kind of answer to questions that they haven't maybe fully formed to themselves. Well, a lot of the true believers are here, and I think a lot of people look for, are looking for an answer. What does my life mean? Is there intelligence in the universe beyond what I see in my local neighborhood? <laughs> A lot of people in the world think that we're not alone. And, uh, I personally, which is true. I think it's a little arrogant to think that we're the only people in the universe, or the only beings. So, yeah, I think we—that's part of the fascination. And so, these are the kinds of people who are likely to accept uh, unusual or bizarre kinds of explanations about things being meaningful. The eyes of the world are on Roswell. We just want to get An even more eccentric and extreme strain of the UFO subculture today are those who actually claim that they are extraterrestrials. We are the Pleiadesians from the constellation of Pleiades. I am the parental. This is my son. I am Ambassador Merlin from the star Alpha Decanus, Ambassador to the United States. We come here with the betterment of all races, not just the human. The question will be answered in 1999 when I'm in the landing party with the flying saucers that land on the extraterrestrial highway and I come out of flying saucer. Then, then many, many people will know and believe that I'm an extraterrestrial. 
On the dark side of the subculture are those people who pursue their belief in UFOs almost as a religion. They seek spiritual fulfillment by transferring belief in God to belief in UFOs. Unlike traditional forms of religion which offer no proof, belief in UFOs is supported by tangible things like sightings, crop circles, alien abductions, and sometimes approaching comets. The occult group called Heaven's Gate anxiously awaited the arrival of Comet Hale-Bopp in 1997. Followers became convinced a UFO traveling inside the comet's tail was awaiting the arrival of their souls. When the Hale-Bopp comet appeared, it, it must have seemed to them that the time was, was too ripe. In March 1997, the Heaven's Gate cult committed mass suicide. 39 people took their lives in the promise of eternal life aboard a UFO. One of the reasons that Marshall Heppelwhite was interested to get his believers to make their move at that time was precisely because he was worried about this confirmation. If you let it go too much or if you key it to a particular calendar event and it doesn't happen, then your whole frame of belief, your whole worldview crumbles. For some, the thought that the UFO experience might be a new religion is bizarre. The need to believe is certainly very strong in all of us. The transcendental urging, some might call it, very, very powerful indeed. People's expectations, their desires for transformation, uh, and their, their longing for an explanation that makes sense of everything. UFOs appeal to the desire to believe in something more. They provide us with the hope that someday we'll have the answers to life's most enigmatic questions. UFOs obviously solve something in the, in the human psyche. They, they provide some sort of service to humanity, whether or not they be real or not. Humans need UFOs. A need to belong, a need for, for comfort, a need for salvation. The longing to have the world made sense to you. I mean, anybody can relate to that. They need, I think, at this point in our, in our history, to look outward for solace, for transcendental solace, as one might put it. They want answers, they want to look for the future. And I think the UFO phenomenon offers them that. It's the perfect mystery. If I can throw in a personal note here, my goal is to see that my nine-year-old grandson's generation begins to think of itself in a new way as an earthling, all those people as earthlings, and that we can qualify for membership in the Galactic Federation, perhaps more aptly admission to the Cosmic Kindergarten. We're obviously not the big shots in the neighborhood. And if that's the case, are they coming here? That's the question raised by the UFO phenomenon. Officially, they're not coming here, but we're going to continue to wonder until we know for sure. Thank you.